Welcome back to another edition of Interview with a Roadie. This is my series where I get to sit down with artists, band members, other roadies, and anybody else in the music industry, and we just have conversations about whatever we feel like. And today, I had the absolute pleasure of sitting down with Comeback Kid vocalist Andrew Newfeld. And we didn't get as much time as I would have liked to, but we still talked about a lot of stuff, man. We talked about how it was like for them just touring, especially during these COVID times. We talked a lot about their new album that's coming out soon, the music videos that they've released, and a bunch of other stuff, like ways that you can help support the band. But I enjoyed myself with this one. I hope you guys enjoy it too. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this quick conversation between myself and Andrew Newfeld. Welcome back, everybody, to another interview with, with a roadie episode. God, I almost fucked it up in two seconds. Today, I have a very special guest. Let's welcome Andrew Newfeld of Comeback Kid. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Uh, dude, excellent. It's um, The weather's been bonkers here, so I'm like, my sinuses are going crazy, but that's the worst I can complain about right now. So, you know, life's good. Wait, is it COVID? I thought I, I just had COVID two <laughs> dude. weeks ago. Do I have it again already? What oh, my fuck? God. Yeah. I can't, dude, I, it, it's, so, it's so insane to me that, like, it, the littlest thing now, we're all so hyper aware of it that the littlest thing happens. Like, I get sniffles, and I'm like, oh, fuck, do I go get tested right now? Like, yeah. But um, I mean, I feel like I feel like I'm immune at least for like a couple months or something. I don't yeah, know. right. So. Did you did you just get over it? Yeah, yeah. Like at, at the end of our last tour, we were uh, we we made it. We we had a good run. We did like about five months of touring. Um, you know, post like since the summer, and then um, we had to cancel two shows because we caught COVID. Uh, I was stuck in Seattle over the holidays. I just got <sighs> home like less than two weeks ago. Uh, a couple guys were stuck in Portland, missed Christmas with it. Like it's kind of whack, you know. Where's but, where, where's home for you now? I live in Toronto. Oh, sick! Um, awesome. Three of the band members live in Vancouver, and one one lives in Winnipeg, which is uh, mine and his hometown. Yeah, Comeback Kid is from Winnipeg originally, but you know now we're spread over across yeah. Canada. Dude, it's crazy because uh, another Canadian band, uh, Unleash the Archers, like when they were on their North American run, they had to cancel all the Canadian shows because of everything that's going on with lockdowns and stuff. And then their guitar player, when he got home, found out he got COVID at the end of the tour. And he was, I was talking to him the other day and he's like, yeah, man, Christmas is wild. I like stood outside my house, like looking in the window, watching my kids open presents and shit. And I'm just like, ah, oh, like it's fuck. But <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a Christmas nightmare a little bit. But yeah, but dude, I mean, you guys weren't even home. That's insane. Um, so yeah, I was gonna I was gonna bring up like um, you know, Winnipeg. That's where you guys are originally from. Um, it kind of when I first discovered you guys. I think it was about the time Turn It Around was was out. So it's it's been almost, fuck, 20 years or so. Um, That's right. And I remember thinking, like, Winnipeg. It's like, does Winnipeg have this kind of scene? And then later, later in life, when I started touring, I went to Winnipeg. And I realized, like, there is a pretty damn good underground music scene there. Now, I don't know right now if there is, but the first time I ever went there, it was pretty awesome. Uh, cutting it as a band there were there a lot of other local bands in your style that you were playing with or was it difficult for you guys to get exposure with your sound or was it a pretty good scene there um the local scene was quite incredible uh when i was growing up we had a place called the royal albert and that kind of dubbed as our cbgb's um this is in like the late 90s uh early 2000s not to date myself too much but yeah. um uh so we would have like sunday matinees there that was all ages so i could you know i was booking shows when i was like 16 17 there and again like you know we were watching cbgb's and stuff okay they're they have this these sunday matinees and we would kind of have the same thing um and we'd have all kinds of bands from hardcore bands to oi bands uh you know some thrash metal bands you know uh all types of all types of music kind of coming together and all types of like beliefs and styles. And because when you're a local scene, you don't really have like at that time, at least you didn't have the luxury just to play in your niche. You know, you had mm -hmm. to kind of branch out and play with whatever uh, kind of local stuff was around. And what that kind of forced us to do um, touring early on, I got my touring start with uh, a 
Comeback Kid kind of has a pre-band called Figure Four, mm-hmm. which was mine and Jeremy's band before that. But just kind of cutting our teeth with with touring with that. But what what it forced us to do with Figure Four and Comeback Kid was, um, when we left on tour, we had to go. Like we had to go for a long time. Like we couldn't just go for like a weekend. And you know, it, you're from Chicago, so you can go for a weekend play Cincinnati or you know Detroit or whatever, and then come back on the on the Sunday Monday. We it, it's eight hours from Winnipeg to get to Minneapolis, and that's where we would go see like the touring bands. Um, yeah, wow. As as youngsters, so we would uh, you know, come back. Kids' first tours was like a month long. You know, Figure Four's first tour was like two to three months long, and sometimes we would just go. Sometimes I would do back and forth tours in between the two bands and people would go home and I'd meet the other guys and we start another band tour. And you just kind of had to like take advantage of it while you could. Yeah. It's, it's crazy too, because like how spaced out, like you were saying everything in Canada, even on the major tours I've been on, you know, you got Winnipeg. And then if you start going West, it's like the next stop for us is either Saskatoon or Regina or something. And then after that, Calgary and Edmonton and then Vancouver. And that's really about it for all the stops on all the tours I've been on where you, you tour in the States and like said, like you can book shows three hours apart from each other and just keep going show after show after show. Like totally we're, we're going to do a, like, a, like if it happens with, you know, cause Canada's still kind of pretty shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have a bunch, like a, a, a three leg Canadian tour planned for this year um with cancer bats and i uh, saw that that's gonna be sick yeah but like it's like really funny uh we'll probably be playing you know a lot of these smaller towns that i wouldn't ever expect to but just to kind of break up that monotony like a lot of like snowboarding towns yes uh in western canada and that's not all of it you know we're gonna have our major cities but we're gonna have you know take an extra week or so you know throughout these this tour just to kind of play the uh the some of these smaller cities to kind of break up the drive and um we've always talked about doing more you know smaller cities uh on on canadian tours but usually when we're doing it we're like let's get it done in like two weeks yeah so it's like bang 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 every day is a night drive um but this one yeah we're gonna we're we're splitting it up into, into three legs so that we can we can take the time to to uh you know play these smaller cities and this is kind of our way to kind of uh you know ease back into touring after being stuck in the states and yeah you know what i'm saying yeah yeah Uh, for sure uh our our european uh shows that we're supposed to start next week have have been canceled we'll have to try to reschedule that for the end of the year i was was gonna ask you about that honestly we we did the right thing by uh booking the last half a year mostly in the states because the states isn't shutting down dude it's the wild west here it's ridiculous canadians (laughs) we're like on the outside looking in like i didn't like think about you know everything that happened over the last two years before um october or or you know october of this past october i hadn't been to america for like two years damn so all this stuff had happened and i I, we just kind of felt like the outside looking in and um but it was good to kind of like actually play some club tours not just you know when we're in canada or when we're in the uk we're just doing festivals it's good to be playing inside it's a bit fearless but yeah yeah, yeah. we got it i actually it's it's crazy because like you know when covid first happened like i remember like we were on tour and it was it was like a light switch it was like nobody was talking about it and then all of a sudden one day it was like hey we're probably going home because of this covid shit and i was like what are you guys even talking about? And then, you know, we go home and they're like, Hey, we're home for a week. And then they're like, Oh, we're going to be home for a month. And then a month later it was like, Hey, all you guys are laid off. We don't know when we're going back out. And slowly in early 2021, I started seeing what really opened it up in the U S for shows was all the country bands. Um, right. A lot of them and we're Corey we Taylor as well. Yeah, yeah, and Corey too. Yeah, yeah, but like, see a motherfucking T. <laughs> yeah, dude. the The crazy thing with with the shows was like, I remember when shows started going back on. Like the last five years, I I actually worked for a country artist, uh, based out of Nashville. I was guitar teching, and I remember seeing all these festivals and all these shows were lined up, and I was like, mm, I wonder how this is gonna go. And I'm not gonna dive into the the politics of this, but a lot of people in the South have different ideals on COVID and restrictions, and for lack of a better way of putting it, 
They don't give a shit. So they're like, we're playing shows. We don't care. And I'll tell you what, all the shows that were going out were selling out and they were packed. And then everything else opened up. Like I actually went to my first show in like probably about two, two, three years that I actually like paid tickets for recently in Nashville. And, you know, while there were still restrictions and stuff, I mean, it was sold out. It was packed. And then I see my friends in Canada. Like you said, I have a lot of friends in Canada because I've worked for some Canadian bands too that are just like, dude, we don't have anything here. And I'm just like, that's... It's, it's kind of crazy. Like we were almost there. Like coming up until last month or like December, Toronto even and, and, and all of Canada, we were having packed out shows, like, you know, full capacity venues. And I feel now with the, when the Omicron came, this is it's almost like the exact same thing that happened what you were saying when when it first hit is where we're like everyone kind of it all kind of stopped yeah and uh canada now like we can't eat indoors and stuff i don't want to talk about covid yeah, too yeah, much, yeah, but yeah. i will let's, I, let's... I will i will say i will say that uh i was very very jealous when i saw um fya festival in florida this weekend i don't know if you're familiar with it yeah, yeah. but it was uh you know you know turnstile terror mind force uh, Pain of Truth, uh, Scowl, all these awesome bands just have at a packed hardcore show yeah. in Florida this last weekend. And I was telling my friends that were there, like, "Yo, like, post more videos. I want to see the yeah. shit on you on Instagram." So, so I'm I'm still li I'm back to living vicariously through the states. Yeah. You know? So it's just uh, because of the restrictions and stuff. So I was reading about the new album. Um, new album comes out next week, man, the 21st. And I'm, I'm super mm -hmm. stoked about it. Cause I went through this phase where like, I, I hate to admit this to you, but like when you work for a lot of bands, you kind of get secluded to the scene that that's in. So I like your, your music is like the soundtrack to my like skateboarding years and my teens and stuff like that. And then I went yeah. through this stretch of like five years where I kind of just fell out of like the hardcore punk scene. And then I saw that you guys had a new album coming out. So I've done like a, a big deep dive in like your last album that I missed as well. And dude, I've listened to all the singles and watched all the music videos for, for the new album, uh, Heavy Steps. And yeah. I thought something was really interesting and I wanted to ask you about this. I saw that you, you guys went back to Winnipeg and recorded with um, is it John Paul Peters. That's right. And that's the guy that did Turn It Around, right? Yeah. So what was yeah. it like getting in there with him after, you know, six album cycles with different producers and stuff? Yeah, like, you know, working in Winnipeg had a lot to do with, um, you know, the, uh, Jeremy's family uh, having kids and stuff there. And it was just a kind of a, a, my parents lived there. It was just a good place to kind of like regroup and kind of uh, it's a middle ground from Vancouver and Toronto yeah. to Winnipeg. And, um John Paul Peters, he's awesome. Uh, we've always kind of kept in touch with him, and he since since he did the Comeback Kid record, he did uh, Propagandy, and he's done Cancer Bats, and so we've always kind of like known what he was up to, and he's always he's kind of become the the premier engineer producer uh, in Winnipeg, yeah. And his studio private ear is amazing. Um, so it was we we knew that like going in there, we could trust him like wholeheartedly. Uh, there was talks about having Will Putney come up and produce the record. We were still going to do it in Canada just to kind of keep it close to family. Um, but uh, be, when the pandemic first hit, then uh, he wasn't able to come. So we kind of did a, a you know, we got tried to get the best of both worlds. We recorded ourselves, you know, ourselves, produced ourselves and had John Paul co-produce at home. And then we sent it to Will Putney in New York uh, to mix the record. And dude, yeah. and, and that's, it's, it sounds great, man. The three songs that we've heard so far and, you know, Will is starting to establish himself. Like he's one of those names for me that if I see he mixed something, I, I know it's going to sound good. Like, so yeah. I'm a sucker for audio quality and sound. So when I yeah. first, um, you know, I actually saw, oh, what was the first video that I watched? I actually, I, I've watched all the three music videos he put out in the last couple months. And the first thing other than the creativity of the actual videos, which I'm going to get to in a second. The first thing I noticed, I was like, damn, this sounds fucking good. Like really yeah. good, dude. And immediately when I, I looked, you know, oftentimes when I listen to stuff in videos and I, uh, the first question in my head is like, who mixed this? Who mixed this? Because I want to know 
but why this sounds so good when i saw will's name i was like oh okay like that makes sense you know yeah and, yeah and, and he's had his hand in a lot um but the videos you guys have put out man have been so entertaining and the story that you had from the first couple were was yeah. so great man i wanted to ask specifically about um heavy steps because music videos are always interesting um i've always explained to the people that are watching that music videos what you see isn't necessarily what's going on at the time it's shot like an actual movie it's it's yeah. acting basically <laughs> So yeah. in those scenes, I know what you're going to ask. I know what you're going to ask right now, but go on. Uh, okay. Um, in those scenes where you're performing at the, at the party mm -hmm. with the, with the kids and all the parents and everything that are there were, was those, was that all people that you knew or were those extras for a music video? Cause in my mind, I'm always like, I wonder if these people don't actually know the band and their extras, what they're thinking when this is happening. Uh, it was a combination of, of, of the bit. Here's a funny thing. A lot of the the performance stuff was filmed in the morning at like 7 a.m. till noon yeah. before the families even got there. Okay. So, and that's why, you know, you you see parts where I'm like, you motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't actually screaming at the kids. Yeah, they yeah. weren't there yet. So, um, but uh the the parent the the families and 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 the kids that was a mix between the two so a lot of it was the director and producers friends who like would be like vancouver people who kind of know comeback kid but might not you yeah. know like maybe heard of us um and then i we did invite some friends but i didn't want to invite too many like i i have a few parent friends you know in vancouver but I didn't want to invite too many of them because then like it's like I'm at a video and I'm like trying to like focus on the stuff that we have to do. But then you almost feel like you have to like babysit them. Not yeah, like no I offense to mean. anyone like but you, you just feel like you kind of have to like take care of them. And it was a, such a hot day. It was like just scorching hot. But we pretty much put on a, a, a big party for these kids that yeah. day. We had the like the slippy slides. We had a, a, a you know, a bouncy uh, yeah. castle who and uh I was gonna say, barbecue. Who, who was it that had to like sit and explain to the kids what a wall of death was? Uh, that <laughs> was um, uh, an AD, I believe. She was there. Was, or actually, no, that was just our friend Lindsay, actually, who was actually the the biggest coach for the kids. And she's like, "All right, guys, you know, let's go." And I tried to also at times. I was like, "Yeah, you know, let's go," but. I tried to leave it to them and the, the, I, it was just a friend of ours who's a promoter and she was like helping like like doing running and like helping get like like uh the supplies for the party and stuff but she yeah. like you know she just got in the mix and and helped uh wrangle up the kids that's um, funny man and it's like you know like the, on, on one side it's like no you like boo boo yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know when you're like you're like like riling up kids like i don't i'm not really hanging out with kids very often so it's pretty funny <laughs> when you like rile them up and you can see like, like how much you can influence them <laughs> oh yeah you know yeah dude that's wild and you know in the it, i gotta really commend you guys and the director too because in the the kind of the technology and day and age we're in with music right now a lot of people are looking at youtube for like new stuff so having an entertaining video like that i think helps a ton and you know I, I was just impressed by the whole thing overall and i loved it and i'm like so looking forward to this album man um it's just come like real full circle for me lately because i'm starting to listen to more bands that i listened to when i was growing up again and i mm -hmm. actually i, I want to ask you i've always wanted to ask somebody in the band this the way i discovered you guys no joke was from like a super old video that was uploaded to like e-bombs world or something back in the day it was like a mock music oh. video of Lorelai. Do you know what I'm talking about? Of Lorelai, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I, it, like when, like it's like, like yeah, kids, they're like, like running around, just uh, the kids are hardcore yeah. dancing around town. Did you? Was that just a fan made thing, or did you guys have anything to do with that? No, it was a fan made thing, and it actually was kind of weird because people thought that it was our video. Yeah. And if and I, it was like, it was dope, and like we've actually met those kids before uh, in Regina, I believe. Um up here in canada but people thought it was our video and it's like it's kind of weird when like obviously if it was our video i probably would have done it a lot different or like yeah, there'd yeah. be elements of it that 
Yeah, so... Yeah, there was a lot of confusion there. People thought it's, that it was us. I, I thought, like, even when I first saw it when I was younger, I thought it was pretty clear that it was, like, a fan-made video. But then I had heard other people say that you guys did have something to do with it, and I didn't know. But I thought the concept of it was hilarious. And it's, like, looking back on it now, I can't believe, like, that was one of the big introductions to your band was from just a fan-made video on, like, E-Bombs World. Yeah, and it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because that song, Lorelei, is a song that a lot of people ask us to play. And we we haven't lately, but I'm like thinking like, why is that song like to the last song on our first record? But just thinking about that, I wonder if that viral video had something to do with some of that, like why people remember that song more than some others. You know what I mean? I mean, there are little things like that. Like I've talked to I've talked to other artists recently where they talk about like songs that they had from their first albums that were like later in the album that they never played live that are the most requested, like. It's um, weird. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And I think some of that is like the nostalgia effect. It's like the people that heard that way back in the day like want to hear it again now, but Right, but me, just like the pla the of placing favorites. of certain the the placing of certain songs on records. Like mm -hmm. we do play songs from uh the, our first two records like especially in the states yeah. more than anywhere. But uh yeah, no, you're kind of reminding me of that and maybe it's it's kind of gives it a little bit of a uh, Maybe I should give it a revisit here. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Dude, you know. but um, so you've got you've got stuff to do. You've got a day packed with media stuff and stuff like that. So before I let you go, there is one thing I always just like to ask directly to the artists. Um, yeah. For those of for those people that are watching that are fans of the band already, or maybe people that just discovered you guys, um, in the day and age that we're in now, what would you suggest is the best way that fans can like support you guys in your music? What would you suggest that they do? Oh shit! Listen to it. <laughs> uh, honestly, I think the biggest way to support us is to come see us play, watch our videos, and listen yeah. to us. See us play, watch our videos, come. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to even think like, what is the other way to like, you know, we don't have like a PayPal or even a yeah. Venmo or anything like that. I don't well, know. And it doesn't even you need know? to be financially. It's like, you know, the big thing, like you said too, is like the live shows, man. I always stress to people. I was like, if you want to support a band, buy a ticket to their show yeah, and, and go actually, rock out. And you're, and you're kind of also reminded me, maybe like kind of a couple puffs, but <laughs> uh, right. you know, I, I do spend a lot of my time just organizing and making sure that our three merch stores are stocked up. I, we have a Canadian and a, and a US one and a Europe one. And I try to keep it easy for people in different parts of the world to order our stuff and try to keep the stuff, the, the, the stuff somewhat consistent, but you know, that's our other, like, dude, it's pretty simple. Buy our merch from our merch stores, from our merch stores. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I got the link tree on my, on, on, on Instagram. So that's actually, that's actually a good point that you just said when you said our merch stores, people, uh, I think a lot of the times when people see merchandise anywhere, they think that it's directly supporting and relating to the band, but there are so mm -hmm. many merch stores out there that aren't associated with the band other than them just selling like their shirt, you know? Totally. Totally. Or it's like, yeah, like, uh, sometimes like labels do things and we work with the labels with that kind of stuff as well. But, uh, definitely the, the best way to, to support us is through that. And that's no secret, but yeah, dude, honestly, just let's get those numbers up on with the streams. Let's get this uh, yeah. record heard. You know, I think, I think nowadays too, like, you know, especially because streaming is so easy and stuff like that too. A lot of people are discovering music by just sharing it with people and like posting about it and telling people, check this out. Like 100%. That's how I've discovered most music lately. And we do a lot of, we're trying to do a lot of stuff, you know, just even, you know, grassroots with our, with the people that listen to us that, you know, uh, Hey, like, let's, let's do a contest. And it's not like, you know, just, it's incentive based, right? Like let's, you know, share whoever shares the most or, you yeah. know, uh, you, you get points for different things and, and then, you know, we'll give you a free what this, that or other, you know? And so we, we definitely value people who, who spread the word, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Well, dude, I'm super stoked for the new record. Uh, for anybody that's watching, just as a reminder, uh, Heavy Steps from Comeback Kid comes out a couple days after yeah. this is going to post. So uh, January, January 21st, 21st, January 21st. And we'll yeah. have a new video for Face the Fire, uh, kind of documenting the last five to six months of our live shows. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, you'll get to see a little bit of what we've been up to. 
Awesome. That's sick, man. I'm super excited. I'll have links below where people can still go pre-order and stuff like that. I've already pre-ordered it for me because like I said, I'm super, super, super excited about it. But man, I hope um, I hope everything in the future works out. I know touring right now is still kind of questionable in some places and kind of kind of bummed to hear that your European tour got canceled because, you know, yeah. a, a lot of people that watch this channel, I think like last time I looked like 60% of the people that watch this channel are all from like Europe. And 30% 30 of that is Germany. And I got excited because I saw like your first few shows were supposed to be in Germany, but. I know. We I, were going to have like an album release party in Berlin and everything. It well, was I'm, great, I'm, but. I'm sure someday you guys will get back over there. And who knows by then, man, you know, with the new album out and stuff like that, hopefully the crowds are just insane and it goes crazy. I was emailing in my sleep this morning with our, our German booking agent trying to make the next one happen. So. Oh, dude, that's um, awesome. And also, uh. Yo, shout out to Rev Amps. They're from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And we actually reamped our album uh, when Will did it. Just because you're a gear. Oh, yeah, yeah, thing, for sure. I want to shout this out. I want to shout out Rev Amplification, uh, who we reamped our record with, and it worked out. And also Share Microphones, who gave me a nice microphone at Furnace Fest. Oh, that is my yeah. shout out for gear. Well, dude, if those are those are people you like, I'll make sure I got links to all that stuff in the description of this video and stuff like that too. I mean, and we well, all know, there's I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I, sure I should makes get good the stuff. boys. I should get the boys LTD, the Gibson, the uh, the best. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get it all. But hey, that's all I have time for. Dude, you're <laughs> for good, man. Hey, thank you very much for your time hands. again. Oh, not not this. I'm just oh being, oh, like, that's all I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I do know you got to get out of here to get to something else too. But seriously, dude, thank you so much for your time. Uh, maybe one of these days after the album comes out, we can actually have you back on here for a little longer and just talk about whatever. Because I feel like we could we didn't even scratch the surface on like just anything we could have actually talked about. But one hundred percent, if you want to if you want to try something even uh, like if you want to add to this or whatever, I could probably make some time for you either later today or uh, next next week or something too. Yeah, for sure, man. We'll figure something out. All right, man. So, all right. Peace, dude. Thank you very much. All right, brother. See ya.